So hey guys, this is Colin, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna briefly go over a project that recently caught my attention. Now I foresee myself doing more videos on this project as they release more information. Now the AI sector has been taking off and you know that during this whole cycle, the big narratives are gaming, AI, and of course memes. If you take a look at the AI market right now, it is worth roughly $39 billion, right over here, 39 billion, the entire market cap of all the crypto AI coins. Now, if you just take a look at NVIDIA, which is almost $900 over the past five years, it's gone from $50 to almost $1,000, right? That's a 20X return in five years. There's no other stock that's doing that in this day and age. And of course, the hot topic is GPUs is AI. So that narrative, I foresee all of this money. So NVIDIA is 2.2 trillion in market cap. Okay, I see a lot of that money start to flow into speculative assets like crypto AI. Why? Because a lot of investors will go into exotic assets in order to produce higher returns. Now remember that all of this is speculative right now, right? None of these AI companies right here are producing revenues that justify its price right now. So a lot of crypto and especially AI crypto is narrative play. Now, before I go any further, remember that none of this is financial or investment advice. The crypto market is extremely volatile, risky, and most people lose their money. So make sure you do your own due diligence and research before you get into any project. Furthermore, none of this is sponsored material. I have not talked to the project at all, and I will always disclose if I have any position or sponsorship on any project that I talk about. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So before we get into the specific AI crypto project, let's take a look at the macro AI trend of what's going on. So if you take a look right over here from the Wall Street Journal, Apple, one of the biggest tech giants of the world, are actually developing their own AI chips for their data center. Now, the other event that's coming up is also right over here, the Developers Conference for Apple. So it's coming up in June 10th to June 14th. I do think we will hear a lot about the AI events at this place. Now, the next major catalyst is OpenAI releasing their chat GPT-5. Now, it's anticipated to be released this summer. And with the rise of chat GPT, you know, it got to 100 million in the fastest time frame compared to all other social medias out there. So I do expect a major boom and a major interest rising when chat GPT-5 by OpenAI goes live and Sam Altman continues within this path of his conquest of having the best AI machine that's out there. And then of course, Nvidia's earning calls is coming up on May 22nd. If they end up beating analysts' estimate, I think Wall Street is going to cheer on Nvidia. The stock is gonna blow up, of course, gaining more attention, more momentum, riding that into the AI wave. And then last but not least, our friends over at Facebook and Meta, remember that Mark Zuckerberg bought $10 billion worth of GPUs, the most advanced GPU, because he wants to get into this race. So Meta is developing their Llama 3 that's going to be integrated into their AI technology technology for use. So you can see all the major tech giants are in this arms race to develop the most powerful AI machinery out there. So how should we think about this AI narrative and how we should position ourselves in the market? Now the way I think about it is once BTC gets onto that high horse again and starts running towards new all-time high, you know making 100k maybe in 2025 or even higher than that, AI is going to be one of the first narrative to explode out of the door. So when I take a look at the market cap right over here just to review it with you guys Guys, right some of the major players like Akash and render right over here render is 4.2 billion dollars bit tensor tau is you know 2.7 billion and then Akash some of my favorite ones is 1.3 billion these are sort of decentralized cloud computing you know making use of GPUs and delegating the GPU powers in order to power things like AI okay if you take a look at the render right it's done a monstrous run now if we go into render specifically right over here you can see it's trading at $11 this recent sort of uh, you know Bitcoin pullback didn't do anything to render at all it dropped to like nine something and then on its way it keeps on going now of course if you take a look at it one year ago right it's almost like seven eight X already and if you look at it all time high right over here towards here you can see that once upon a time you could purchase render well below a dollar and you had a lot of time to buy this thing below a dollar so a lot of people look back at these prices and they say is that realistic well render is providing you with that example right it's not only 10 20x it's done more than that and its market cap is huge for sure you can get into these safe projects will they go up of course they'll go up if ai runs i think that render will run as well what does it have left 
to go. Who knows? Who knows how big AI will go? But at these levels, I think it's too big for me, right? Because even if it's three, four, five axes, that's about like 16, 20 billion dollars. That's a lot, a lot to go three, four, five x from here. So Render is a great project. I think that they are one of the best. They're one of the first. They're going to make great moves, but that's probably a little bit too big for me to get into right now. So those are some large and mid cap AI projects that I think will do extremely well if we go into a Bitcoin bull run with the AI narrative leading the way. Now I'm going to talk about some small caps. Okay. So these are the micro caps that you get into the smaller caps that are highly risky, very volatile, but can do a significant return. So you got to weigh your risk and reward. Now the first small cap project I've been talking about on this channel forever. Now, if you know about it, it is Node AI. So the ticker name is GPU. It's one of my favorite projects. If you take a look at it right now, it's trading at a buck 36, right? Its market cap is about 120 million. Sounds like a big market cap, but as you can see, compared to some of the other gorillas within the room, it's a small market cap. Now I started talking about node AI, so GPU, when it was roughly between 30 and 40 cents, okay? I personally bought in at the 20 cents, okay? I still hold my node AI, my GPU bag, all the way through. So when it blasted up to $3, you know, to something, I thought about selling it at that point, didn't sell it. So I'm still holding my bag. For those of you who are wondering, it's one of those projects where I believe it's going to do, you know, a 10, 20, 30, 40 X. And if you just come right over here onto their website, you can see that they're powering demand of the next gen AI by distributing GPU. Okay. So access global GPU resources. For those of you who don't know about this project, I did a whole video on this project. Just go back earlier and you'll see, okay making it more affordable and scalable. One of the things I liked most when I got into this project was the tokenomics, okay? Besides the, you know, really amazing work and cool team, I like the tokenomics, it was really fair. You know, 90% of it was liquid and then 10% was saved for centralized exchange. There is a buy and sell tax of 4% in order to help the founders fund the project. And if we come right over here to Crypto Plug's tweet, he summarizes very well for a lot of people who've been holding Node AI for a very long time. So he says, as GPU is my strongest conviction for the following reasons. It's an L1 blockchain tailored for task distribution across nodes. Network now has 400 GPUs and 7,000 rental hours, okay? 33,000 holders. I was in here when there was a couple of thousand holders, so it's grown a lot. You can stake the earn ETH and then revenue sharing for holders, rent and lend GPU, which is their model. And then he compares it to all the other market players, right? Render, Akash, OPSEC, GPU. Now, of course, he holds the token, so he's biased. Just like I am biased, like I was when it was 20 cents, I still think it is one of the best projects, and it has a lot of room to grow because it's small. Now, remember that these smaller projects are very risky, it's very volatile, Notice it just went to like 250, 270, and then it returned back to a buck when the market was dumping. So you got to be able to stomach, hold out if you want those large giant gains. And if you're taking profit on this, that's no problem. I think that's a great thing. I think that's one of the things that we don't say enough within the market. Don't be afraid. If you're at three, five, you know, six X, you got to take those profits, okay? Everybody has a different comfort level. For people who even two X their money, that's way more than they would have made sticking their money into some GIC or into the stock market or into some type of index fund. So everybody has a different threshold. And finally, onto the project that really caught my attention during the past two weeks as I was doing my AI research. The project is Zero Gravity. If you take a look right over here, they say they're the first modular AI chain building an infinitely scalable, programmable data availability layer. So that's the DA. So from now on, I'll say DA for AI apps. So this is really an infrastructure play that you're looking at when you're looking at AI. I, I think about it as like an immutable for the Web3 gaming. That's how I think about this project. Now let's just jump into it. There's not a lot of information about it, but I'll go over what I know and then we can take a deeper look as they release more information. And if we just jump right over here onto their tweet, they explain it pretty well in these three points. They say that zero gravity is now ushering a new data availability 2.0 with a couple key aspects. Number one, speed and scalability. They talk about why the modular architecture is important for this application. Upgraded consensus. So if we take a look right over here. They say speed and scalability. Our architecture enables transaction speeds magnitudes greater than the alternatives. 
This is with our consensus layer, so they're using a sharding, having both a data publishing lane and a data storage lane, and our on-chain database OG storage, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about that. Their modular architecture, our architecture is modular and can fit with various different consensus mechanisms and algorithm storage protocols without any overarching system um, redesigns, okay? Now, if you take a look at their website again, and if you go down to here, you can actually check it out in terms of what they're talking about. They say and claim that, you know, in terms of their storage costs, their retrieval cost is only 0 0.0005, okay, of a dollar versus $51 for each in its layer one, right? Like ETH is really expensive. Everybody knows that. If you use it on a daily basis, you'll know that it is very expensive. And we go back to this, you can see they talk about their upgraded consensus mechanism. They're using two components, the BFT or Byzantine fault tolerance and their DAG, okay? Directed acyclic graphic. Now, this is not something new because Phantom uses this, so FTM uses this. I did a whole video on, you know, BFT. We're not going to get into Byzantine fault tolerance today and the DAG today. But overall, it basically keeps the network more secure and protects the nodes from malicious attack. Uh, if you're more interested in that, check out my Phantom video. I talk about this extensively. If you go to Lackland Todd, uh, right over here, he summarizes the role of zero gravity very well. He talks about how does it apply to the Web3 future, right? So three things, okay, core benefits, access to on-chain AI models, data storage and data availability. And his two examples that he illustrates pretty well is that Web3 gaming must store a lot of data, right? Player accounts, you know, execution assets, points, all the actions that you're taking, that's a lot of data. And with the current architecture right now, that cannot be solved, okay? Layer ones and layer twos can use zero gravity's AI model or use, you know, zero gravity for their data availability and data storage, okay? Right now, they already have partnered with Polygon, Arbitrum, Fuel, and many more. So all of these layer twos already. Now, of course, we're not the only people who are excited about this project, and it gives me more confidence when I see real money start pouring in. So it's in its pre-seed, it raised $35 million from over 40 investors. If we take a look at the list right over here, you can see that some of the big investors who are leading this round, Delphi Digital, they're basically in almost every Web3 project. You can see Animoca Brands, OKX Ventures, Alliance Dow, okay? And then take a look right here. So Stanford University. So, you know, a great institution when it comes to computer science and, and lots of great things out there are investing. It gives me a little bit more confidence that, you know, people are doing it legitimately, taking a look at hardcore data when they're actually executing their project. So great list of VCs right over here. Unfortunately, no tokenomics right now for us to look at. I'm anticipating that to come out soon. So why are the investors backing this project? Well, for good reasons. If you take a look at this team right over here, they are decked out and stacked. The CEO is Michael Heinrich right over here. You can see if you click on his LinkedIn profile, you can see some interesting things in his background, okay? So he was an ex-Bridgewater, so he is at Bridge Water. For those of you who do not know, Bridgewater is run by the legendary Ray Dalio who runs that fund. Okay, so great background. He's worked for Bain before, Microsoft before. So a lot of things within his background that is great in order for him to run this project. Next up, the CTO right over here, Ming Wu. If you look at Ming Wu's background right over here on LinkedIn, you can see if you go down, you can see that he's worked on a bunch of things. And then specifically, he's been at Microsoft for 16 years. So having that robust background in sort of computer applications and technology, he's probably one of the most fitting person to be the CTO of this project. And then Fan Long right over here, who is a professor at the University of Toronto in the Department of Computer Science, one of the top university, if not the top university in Canada, right over here. And a lot of his research is within, you know, software engineering, system securities and blockchain. So he's quite involved within the blockchain and computer science industry. So you could see this team comes with the background in order to execute a project like this. So they've already launched their testnet back in April. So check it out, check out this paper. It gives you a lot of details. And then the mainnet I anticipate to come this September or this fall. So this is one of those really interesting projects that are sitting there right now, launching during the middle of a bull cycle, but we're having a pullback right now. So 
So should they launch this token? This is a project that I would be watching out for. Great investors, an awesome team to run it, and it has a lot of application. Now remember, a lot of this is narrative. In crypto, a lot of things in crypto are narrative. If you look at you know Web3 gaming, AI, memes, a lot of it does not justify the valuation of where token as that today. But if you're investing in crypto and if you're thinking for the next sort of 16 to 18 months, I do think that the AI narrative will continue to thunder up. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video. I hope that you found the video helpful and add some value to your own crypto journey. So if you like content like this, please remember to give the videos a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you next time.